Breathe in the essence of this season, the essence of this day. Breathe in joy. Breathe in peace. Breathe in that Christ presence that is in each of us. And another nice deep breath. Oh, letting it out fully and completely. We give thanks for this day. For this family of friends, for this community. For the messages we get to hear and get to share. And this morning I'd like you to use the power of your imagination. I want you to go deep inside and visualize that spark of divinity that is within you. That Christ consciousness that is already within you. Yes, you are a part of God. And yes, God is a part of you. And I would ask you during this time, as we use our imagination, to behold the wonder of that Christ within you. See it as your little child. Your Christ child. Love it. Cherish it. Adore it. Imagine shepherds coming to visit. Imagine a bright light leading the way for wise men to come and share their gifts. It's all for you. It's all for the holiness that is already existing inside of you. That is waiting to be expressed by you. To come out into this world through you, as you. I want us to spend a little time in the quiet with that whole idea of adoring this Christ child. Even if you have difficulty imagining it, give it a try. See it in your mind's eye. Hold it in your imagined arms and love it. Love it as you've never loved anything or anyone before. Right now, in the stillness and in the quiet. What a beautiful image. The tiny baby surrounded by love, being adored, being gifted precious gifts, angels all around, announcing your birth, announcing your arrival into this world, announcing the Christ child being born. We say thank you, Father, Mother, God, sweet Holy Spirit, for this awareness, for this consciousness, for this belief, for 
with this miraculous story that we celebrate every year and for the ability to put ourselves in this story to be that Christmas miracle give it birth this day. And through it all, we say, thank you, God. Thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. people, is that right? <laughs> well, they, they put their toe in just to see I'm an irregular, I don't really count. Oh, I'm part of the choir. It's working. It's working. I shouldn't have said anything. <laughs> How's everybody doing? Did we have a good uh, Thanksgiving? Yes. Did you, have a, did you get all filled up with turkey and pumpkin pie? And, yeah, for another week. Oh, sweet potatoes. <laughs> Mashed potatoes. Is it grand? And uh, how many are already ready for Christmas? Nobody. Oh, a few people. No, really? Usually I hear the same thing every year. Christmas just took me by surprise. How could that be? It comes the same time every year. What's the deal? I wasn't ready for Christmas this year. Anyway. So, uh, I got to ask you this question too. How many had a hard time with that meditation? Nobody. Paul had a hard time with it. Very good. He, he spoke up. He says, oh, that was difficult. It's hard to see myself as that Christ child. It's hard to see that spark of divinity within me. It's hard to celebrate who I am. And uh, to think that uh, I could be precious enough that angels would uh, come in from above and Wise men would come and visit with precious gifts and, and all the things that happened that, you know, we celebrate the Christmas time. And I'm glad you admit that. And I'm surprised that more people didn't have a little trouble with that. Because we have never been conditioned for that, have we? 
we've never been told to love ourselves and cherish ourselves like that, have we? Uh, how many had really great, great childhoods that they remember? <laughs> well, a few. A few. Uh, and how long did that last? <laughs> how, how, how long did it take before you get conditioned and you start to realize, oh, I'm supposed to eat all the food on my plate. Oh, before I can go out and play. Oh, I got to get all my homework done before I can go out and play. Oh, I got to do this right, do that right. <sighs> Comb my hair this right, and you know, everything like that. And, it's starting to take all the joy out of who we are as human beings. How many have had that kind of a childhood? Yes. Yeah. All worse. <laughs> Some of us had worse. So I want to kind of talk to us today about birthing that divinity that is inside of us all. Uh, yeah, please, yeah. Make yourself comfortable. Absolutely. Absolutely. Don't get that twisted neck. <laughs> See, I don't have to tell jokes. I got you laughing already. <laughs> it's just joke stuff, anyway. So, uh, I want to get us all on the same page. Is that okay? I want to give you an interesting uh, book to read in the Bible. How many, how many love the Bible? Oh, a few. Okay. Because, you know, a lot of people in Unity, they have an aversion to the Bible. They're, they've been beaten up by it, right? They've been told this and that and this and that and this is true and that's true and you're going to go you know where and uh, you know what. And, uh, <laughs> I got, got an audience of one over here. <laughs> anyway, it's hard to uh, see ourselves in that, uh, in that light. But it's so important that we do. And if we had anything less than a grand, tremendous childhood, we need to find ways to heal that. Because we want to find out the things that are blocking that divinity that we trust, that we know is within inside of us. The divinity that we know, that we say, as children of God, our second principle, right, says, as children of God, we inherit a spark of divinity. Isn't that what we say? Isn't that the second principle? So we believe that, and we say that, and we affirm that. But how many of us really get a chance to express that all the time? Okay, that's what I was expecting. <laughs> no hands at all. <laughs> so the part in the Bible that I really like that I'm going to be talking about today, and I'm not going to read you the whole thing because I lost my glasses somewhere. Uh, I'll have to get a new pair, but that is uh, the book of John, chapter 14. So everybody pull out their Bibles. <laughs> Oh, never mind. <laughs> Go home and read it. Uh, or Google it on the internet. And really this chapter 14 is uh, an incredible story all by itself. Jesus is trying to tell his disciples one more time <laughs> who he is, and where he came from, and uh, what's about to happen. And just like many times in the past, the disciples just don't get it. So I'm letting myself off the hook, because I'm thinking if the disciples who spent all the time with him and traveled with him and uh, you know ate with him and slept with him and I didn't do that <laughs> <laughs> slept in his vicinity and <laughs> and uh, talked with him all the time and got these lessons all the time got this special attention all the time if they didn't understand him then I'm going to let myself off the hook if I don't is that right? Yeah. Will you let yourself off the hook? So he talks a lot about in the beginning that I won't get into, but please go ahead and read it uh, on your own. And, uh, and he says a lot of things about, and I say, I read from chapter 14 in John a lot of times when I do a funeral, because it talks about the many uh, chambers and I'll come back for you and all that. But I want to start down here where it says, uh, and Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, the life. So he's identifying himself, right, <coughs> as the way to where? As the way to a heavenly consciousness, as a way to a Christ consciousness. He's identifying himself as the way, he's identifying himself as the truth. I come here and I speak the truth of what I know. I speak 
the absolute truth, that never changing truth from God, from divinity, right? And uh, I am the life. I am the life of God. So, Travis, when I ask you to be the life of God, I'm not asking you to be full of yourself, but I am asking you to be fully yourself. Does that make a difference? Does that make sense? Is that good? Because a lot of us, you know, we get into our heads and then we get to a fall out of ourselves. <laughs> we don't want that. <laughs> Why am I talking to you? <laughs> <laughs> We're having a conversation here. Oh, I just love to have fun at church. How about you? Is that okay? And he says, I am the way. No one comes to the Father except through me. <clears throat> so here's how I interpret that. And you can interpret it any way you want. Let me just say right off the bat, you don't have to believe the way I believe. You don't have to think the way I think. You don't have to worship the way I worship. The important thing is that you get the meaning that you get out of it that's uh, important and relevant to you. This is just me speaking and I'm sharing how I understand it. It's not the only understanding <laughs> Or the only truth. We could have, probably have 30 or 40 different interpretations. Is that okay? So if you're looking for absolute, you probably won't get it from me. Uh, I, like to, I like to think that uh, most churches uh, like to have answers for your questions. But in unity, I think we like to question your answers. So uh, we'll, we'll leave it that way. But I think what he's saying is, uh, no one shall come to the Father except through me. It's like... Look, I'm showing you how to do it. I'm showing you how to, how to think. I'm showing you how to act. I'm showing you how to behave. I'm showing how to, how to be sacred. I'm showing you how, to, how you, we can create miracles. I've had you healing people. I've had all this stuff done. I'm showing you the way. You can come through the Father through me if you do as I do. Not that he was the only one. Because I tell you, what blocks a lot of people from expressing that divinity within is that they think that Jesus was the only one. And Jesus never said that. He said, I am the way, and I am the life, and I am the truth. But he didn't say, I'm the only way, and the only truth, and the only life, did he? And uh, so when we say, or when churches in general say, Jesus is God, and we need to worship Jesus, then to be like Jesus or to be Christ-like or to have that Christ consciousness kind of already defeats, defeats us because how could we ever imagine ourselves to be like gods or to be like a god? Isn't that right? Or am I way off base? Is that pretty close? So we're, we, we start off already with this block that we don't believe we could ever get there. We don't believe it's, it's too far away. But Jesus was like you and I. He was a he was a person. He was a living, breathing person. He, he bled. He, he, uh, he loved. He, he got angry. He did all the same things that you and I do. And, uh, but he had established within himself a consciousness that made him one with the Father. And he talks about that. In the same chapter, if I keep on going, if you know me, this is Jesus talking, if you know me, and he's talking to his disciples, you will know my Father also. So he's expressing God through him. And from now on, you do know him. In other words, you do know God, and you have seen him through me. So Philip says, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. In other words, Philip didn't get it, right? He still didn't understand. And Jesus said to him, <laughs> Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? That's what he says, right here. <laughs> Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show me the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father? And this is an important 
part of what he's talking about, because this is very <coughs> much unity. Do you not believe that I am in the Father and, to be perfectly clear, he has to say this and part, and God the Father is in me. He's not saying I am God and the only God that worship me, is he? He's saying I, my presence and my consciousness indwells in God and the source and the all knowledge and all wisdom and that source also dwells inside of me. That's what we say in our second principle that we all have that spark of divinity that God is within. We don't have to pray to heaven, we can pray to our inner selves. And I like to think because God is everywhere present in everything, I can pray to anybody that I want to pray to. But a lot of times if I can put the focus on me to remember who I am, to remember that I am a child of God, to remember that I'm a beloved, then that will benefit me, right? You think it will benefit you too? Yeah. <laughs> Just you, right? <laughs> Then he goes on to say, <laughs> he's still talking to Philip, he's saying, how can, you, how can you say that you have not seen the Father? Show us the Father. Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? And the words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own. But the Father who dwells in me does his works. What's he telling us again? He's telling us, look, it's not me and my ego consciousness. It's not me and my human consciousness. It's me in touch with that God presence within me that is doing these works, that is doing these, the speaking. I take no special uh, exception to the rule. People are trying to make me special, trying to declare me as special, but I'm just like everybody else. This is what I'm getting from this. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. He says it again. But if you do not believe that, then believe me because of the works themselves. What works is he talking about? All the miracles that has happened, you know, the wine and the water, the water and the wine and the healing and the raising of the dead and all that stuff. All the stuff that he's already demonstrated, that he's already proven. He says, if you don't believe me, what I'm saying, and even though these are God's words that I'm saying, they don't come from me, they come from a higher power, they come from a higher source, at least believe my works. And then he kind of minimizes the works. And I think it's a good thing that he minimizes the works because he doesn't want us really to emphasize the work part. I remember there was this minister, uh, this, uh, I forget his name right now, but he talked about how easy it was to manifest money. He said money is the easiest thing to manifest. And I was thinking, hmm, that's crazy. But he had the consciousness for it. He had become a millionaire at one time, and he had lots of wealth, and then stock markets or whatever, and it all came crumbling down, and he was broke. And he wasn't bothered a bit, because he knew he had a millionaire consciousness, and he knew he could get it back. He knew he could recreate that. He says, that's the easiest thing. And I think this is what Jesus is saying. Jesus is saying, look, this works that I do. That's the easy part. The hard part is having the consciousness for it. The hard part is believing that you can do it. The hard part is recognizing the power that you already have within you. Does that make sense? Am I too far out of line? Have I lost anybody? Do we need to stay after school? <laughs> Just checking, man. I, I, I don't know. So, so then he says, believe in me because of the works themselves. And very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do. Now, I'm in uh, chapter 14, verse 12, if you want to look it up. I'm not making this up. <laughs> it's right here. <laughs> it 
in fact, will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. The Father. Father. Says the Father. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. What's he trying to tell us? What's he trying to tell us? God is within. This divinity that I'm talking about is within. And if you can elevate your consciousness, if you can think highly enough of yourself, if you can bring yourself to know how precious you are already, even though no one has ever told you that, even though no one has proclaimed that for you, <coughs> even though you didn't get supposedly the angels gathered around and the wise men bringing gifts and all that stuff, that you are just as precious, that you have the same divine energy that I have. It comes to me from the source that lives inside of you. It is inside of you. How many believe that? You know, we say it all the time, don't we? But how many times do we actually express it and experience it? What I was trying to get us to do this morning in meditation was to have an experience of ourselves as that Christ child. That's what it was all about, Paul. It was to, to, to know how important each of us is in our own way. How important it is for you to shine your light and how it affects people around you. How important it is for you to express that Christ within you. To let the ego part of us that gets in our way, that wants to uh, put up our protections and put up our walls and make ourselves look good and make sure we don't get embarrassed and make sure all that stuff, all of that stuff doesn't matter. That's all for nothing. That's all for show. That's all meaningless. What's really important is that we identify that Christ nature that each of us is. Do you believe me, Hank? Yeah. <laughs> He's the only one, right? <laughs> you saw it somewhere? You got to start somewhere. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So going within is a good place to start, right? How many of us do that? From this day forward, how many of us are going to do it? Yes. You know? Turn to your neighbor right now and say, I behold the Christ in you. I behold the Christ in you. Let's take it a step further. Turn to your neighbor and say, I adore you. You know, most of us can say it. How many of us have a hard time receiving it? <laughs> right? You know, we've been put down so often, we've been criticized so often, we've been judged so often, we've been critiqued so often, we've been corrected in our lives so often, we've had the finger pointed at us so often that it's so hard to get in touch with that truth. So, I, so it needs practice, it needs practice. So we've got now to Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> By Christmas, I want you to have a down pat. <laughs> and when we celebrate the birth of the Christ, we can celebrate the birth of the expression of the Christ that is within us, because it's the birth of the our own Christ consciousness that we can get to if we can get past all the blocks and all the experiences. And all the stuff that we've felt and all the disappointments, all the betrayals, all the lies, all the different things that have happened to us. We, can, we need to heal all of that so we can get in touch with what's really important. Is that why we come to church? Amen. You know, this message, I'm speaking now during Christmas time, but isn't this a year-long message? Don't we talk about this all year long? Don't we talk about the, the child of God that is within each of us all year long? and uh, wanting to express that, wanting to get it out. This is just another way of looking at that. This is just another way of taking an opportunity to get in touch with what's really important this holiday season. And, you know, for me, I couldn't do it for myself at first because, you know, 
It just wasn't going to happen that way. But I could find someone in my life and say, well, possibly there's a spark of divinity there. <laughs> possibly the Christ consciousness might be in that person. Possibly this one loves enough, or this one forgives enough, or this one is joyful enough. Possibly out there I can see the divinity. And slowly but surely you can work it back into yourself. Does that make sense? You know, and, uh, I don't know how many of you know that I'm a member of Alcoholics Anonymous, but I am, and I've been there for, I forget how many years, 30-something years. And at first I couldn't see me in that. <laughs> One day this guy told a story about, you know, he kept on looking at other people and said, well, when I get that bad, I'll quit. And, when he got that bad, he said, oh no, well, when I get that bad, I'll quit. <laughs> and then one day, he's sitting in the bar, and he's looking over, and he says, well, when I get that, oh, that's me. <laughs> I better quit. <laughs> and uh, sometimes it's so much easier, when, instead of taking our own inventory, sometimes it's so much easier, and it's not recommended, but it can be done, it's easier for me to take your inventory. And I tell you why that works. <laughs> because then I can just cross your name off and put my name on it and not take in my own inventory. Does that make sense? Yes. If I take your inventory and I'm, you know, this and that, and you're stubborn and you're self-centered and you're selfish and you don't keep your word and, the, and I got you down, Pat, <laughs> I only recognize it because it's in me. I can take your name right out of that and put my name in it and say, David, this, when did you do this? David, when did you not show up in integrity? When did you disappoint? When did you lie? When did you cover up? When were you not at your best? So it's that way. So if you're having a hard time finding that divinity within yourself, try to find it at least in someone else. Because if it's possible for someone else, then it'll be possible for you too, right? Because we're all in this together, right? So what's, besides the belief that it's impossible because Jesus has been put up as a God to be worshipped separate and apart from us, that he's not really a man like us. You know, I like what uh, Mary Madeline sang in the Jesus Christ Superstar, he is just a man, right? He's just a man. You know? And uh, if we can get that part that he's just like us, but he went through what he had to go through to get to where he was going to be. So the question is not, can I do it? The question is, do you want it enough to do it? Now that's, a, that's an internal question inside of you. Do I want it enough to do what it takes to express the divinity that is within me, to express that Christ nature within me. Because what is that going to take? Oh, maybe I'm going to have to quit gossiping. Oh, no, not that one. <laughs> I can't quit gossiping. That's my recreation for the day. <laughs> maybe it'll take, oh, you mean I'm going to have to forgive that person? That person that uh, betrayed me, that person that, uh, uh, you know, whatever that person did, you know, could have stole the spouse, could have stole property, could have done any number of things. You may not have to forgive that person. You know, if you really want that Christ divinity to come through, do you think you have to do that? Yes. You think that that's part of the process? You think you have to become clean, come clean with all that? And here's the thing about forgiveness. That will be real helpful to a lot of people. I know it's been real helpful for me. You know, no matter what happened, no matter what the circumstance, no matter what the situation, no matter what the conflict, if I own my part, that makes it a little easier. What part did I play in this? Did I play the victim part in this? Did I play the villain part in this? You know, did I play the helpless part in this? Did I allow it to happen in some way? What part did I play? And no matter what it is, if you can grasp that one little uh, nugget of, 
accountability so that you can change it next time and own it next time and it won't happen again next time, that's preparing yourself to allow that Christ consciousness to come forth. So you think forgiveness has a lot to do with it? Yeah. Did Jesus talk at all about forgiveness? Yeah. And uh, Peter asked him how many times and what did he say? Seven times. A lot? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, Peter, man, you got to forgive a lot. <laughs> You just keep right on forgiving, I'll tell you when. <laughs> <laughs> you got a lot of forgiving to do. How many of us got a lot of forgiving to do? How many of us can start to make a list today of the people we need to forgive? At least a list. At least a list. <laughs> no, not a catalog, just a list. <laughs> And how many need to include ourselves onto that list? You know, what did uh, Myrtle have to do when she had to heal herself from tuberculosis? She had to forgive herself from thinking that she was anything but a precious child of God. Her affirmation was, I am a precious child of God, therefore I do not inherit sickness. And she had to ask herself and she has to ask her body for forgiveness for thinking anything less than the divine nature that there were anything like, you know, if I have to go to lotion or something, I say, oh, my lungs are terrible, they're rotten, I can't trust them, they, they, they're going to let me down, they're going to want to give me six months to live, right? We can just have a lot of bad feelings about, our, about ourselves. But it was, she had to turn that around. She had to turn that around and ask for forgiveness. Ask the cells of her body for forgiveness. For not seeing the light, for not seeing their preciousness, for not seeing how beautiful they are. <clears throat> not seeing how they have to come out and, and be and express. So that's, that's another part of it. As we make that list, make sure you put ourselves down. How many things do you have to forgive yourself for? Because that's where it's got to start. Doesn't it have to start in here? You know, we can take everybody else's inventory, but if we don't take our own, it's for nothing. You know? We can say how bad everybody else is, but if we don't take a look inside and heal what is ours to heal, forgive what is ours to forgive, it's all for nothing. And if we don't recognize the truth about ourselves, who's going to recognize it in us? You know, let's say you're the most loving person in this room. Let's just say you are. And I tell you that, and everybody else in this room knows it, but you don't. What good does it do mm -hmm. to tell her? None, because she can't hear that. She'll say to herself, yeah, but you don't really know. You don't know what I've experienced. You don't know what I've said. You don't know what I've done. You only see the small part of me. You really don't know. And we judge ourselves and we condemn ourselves and we don't allow ourselves to love ourselves. How many have to learn to love ourselves? Just to learn that from scratch. You know, because I tell you, and it's not our fault, but we've been robbed of that. If you were born with angels around you, with sheep, <laughs> with wise men, with a star, if, if everybody had this tremendous experience at birth of what it was like to be precious, to be adorned, to be welcomed into the world, how many of you would feel different about who you are? Yeah. It's not your fault that you are the way you are. You've been robbed of that. <coughs> but if you continue on, guess whose fault it is? <laughs> you have to be accountable now for that. You have to say, I now know better. I know now, I... <laughs> I now know better than to criticize myself. I now know better than to put myself down. I now know better than to judge myself. I now know better than to doubt myself. I now know that faith is what's going to work in my life. I now know that joy is what's going to work in my life. I now know that my consciousness is going to seek peace in my life. Seek, seek tranquility in my life and allow what needs to be healed to heal. Does that make sense? Is that our mission? Is that our goal?
can we, if we do all these things, birth that Christ consciousness and express that? He said we could. He said the doing was the easy part. Getting there is the hard part. Getting the stinking thinking resolved, that's the hard part. Going within, and that's what it takes. Going within. Going in the quiet. Going in the meditation. Doing the work that is ours to do. So, from now to Christmas or till I see you again next year, you have your work cut out for you. You're going to make the list. You're going to make amends to everybody on that list, including you. You're going to see who you need to forgive including you. You're going to see where your fears come from. Fears will block us faster than anything. You know, fear to express, fear to speak up, fear to, uh, oh man, if I speak up and if I show the Christ within me, people will think that I'm scratching my head way out here. Don't worry about what other people think. It's none of your business. That's not what's important. When you're worried about what other people think about you, where's that coming from? Ego, it's not coming from spirit, it's not coming from love, it's not coming from a place of security and rest and peace. It's coming from fear. I'm afraid of what people are going to think of me. I'm afraid of how to show up. I'm afraid I might do it wrong. I'm afraid I might get criticized. I'm afraid someone might tell me I'm doing it wrong and embarrass me. Don't worry about that kind of stuff. None of that matters. You know, who was it that wrote that book? What you think of me is none of my business, Terry Cole Whitaker. What you think of me is none of my business because it's really a reflection of you. If you think I'm talking too long, it's because you talk too long. <laughs> you get what I mean, right? We are a mirror for each other. Being in relationship with others, it's being a mirror for each other. You know, what irritates me about any of you is what probably irritates you about me. Did I say that right? Yes. <laughs> well, I said the same thing twice. I don't know how that works. But you know what I mean? We mirror each other. And, and if we, can, if we uh, can see it, then we got it, right? We can point it out we've got it. We've either, we've either done it, we're doing it, or we're capable of doing it. So we're going to make the list. We're going to do the forgiveness work. We're going to honor that divinity within us. We're going to celebrate that divinity in, within us. We are going to praise that divinity within us. We're going to encourage that divinity within us to more fully express, to be more fully who we are, so that we are fully ourselves. Not full of ourselves. We are fully <laughs> ourselves and fully present to this message during Christmas season. Deal? Deal. 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 God bless. Thank God you so much. Bless.